the keynote speaker and our first hero of the day is Dr. Nabiha Sekalan, CEO of Selino Biotech, recognized by Forbes as one of the top biotech and pharma award winners in 2020. Please welcome Dr. Sekalan. Thank you so much for the invitation to speak with you today. I'm Nabiha Sekalan. I'm the CEO and co-founder at Selino Biotech. And our mission at Selino is to democratize the regenerative medicine industry. We're committed to generating every human's cell. It's interesting because today human cells are made in a highly manual artisanal process. It's usually a scientist, highly trained scientist sitting at a bench, looking at cells by eye, cleaning up the cells by hand. And that's how personalized regenerative medicines are scaled up. It's not a scalable approach. And in order to scale these cell therapies, the entire process must be automated. That's what we do at Selino. We automate the stem cell generation process. We take principles from the semiconductor industry where we use all optical imaging and laser processing to manipulate, characterize the cells with no human steps. And on top of that, we take a very personalized approach so that every patient that needs regenerative medicines has access to them. I'm a physicist by training. I did my PhD in physics at Harvard University. And it's been a very unique journey getting to where I'm today leading a very innovative breakthrough regenerative medicine company. My story really starts with space. So when I was invited to keynote the survival track today, I was honored. I remember being a seven-year-old. I was living in Germany at the time with my parents and being completely obsessed with the stars, being obsessed with planets, being obsessed with space travel. At that point in time, I had set my mind to becoming an astronaut because that was the final frontier to me. It was the most amazing breakthrough thing I could possibly pursue. And in that journey, I really learned to appreciate the lens of physics because physics to me became this universal language through which you could analyze not just things that were happening on Earth, but you could also analyze everything that was happening in the universe and beyond. You could start thinking about what happened at the Big Bang? What caused matter to appear from nowhere? As a child, I was very engaged in all of these topics and this obsession carried through high school and my parents fully supported it. I am eternally grateful to them. I know they're watching from Bangladesh right now. And uh, my mom essentially, whenever I had a new crazy idea related to physics or space, she completely encouraged me to pursue it. Fast forward several decades, I ended up at Harvard University and uh, joined a laser physics lab, technology lab, which was an incredible playground for me to explore the different applications of laser physics and nanotechnology. But I knew at that moment that I was, of course, my first love was space physics, but I knew I wanted to bring my physics skills into human health. For my generation of physicists, human health had the biggest set of unresolved challenges that we were, I was very excited to solve through the lens of physics. And I found my second love, you can call it that way. I discovered stem cells. Stem cells are a powerful cell type. They're a single cell type that contain the code to become every cell type in the organism. Here I'm showing you a video of a new zygote where you started with a single cell that's dividing, that's differentiating, turning into all the different cells that would make the entire organism. And in my mind, I was blown away that a single cell could contain 
all the code and execute that code so articulately to produce complex beings. This is how babies are formed in the womb. This all powerful cell type opens up incredible possibilities because if we were able to make artificial stem cells, we would be able to generate any adult cell tissue that we wanted. And this opens up possibilities to generate cells and tissues for a range of applications, all the way from drug screening, human on chip, and of course, regenerative medicine, which I'll be talking a lot about. But stem cells are limited in supply and the highest quality stem cells are embryonic stem cells, which have several ethical concerns around them. The entire landscape of this industry shifted dramatically when Dr. Shinya Yamnaka, the Nobel laureate, discovered that, hey, not only can you start from a stem cell and turn it into an adult cell, you could also turn an adult cell into a stem cell, return it back to its embryonic-like cell state. This is one of the most powerful discoveries of our lifetimes in the bio biology space. This discovery opened up a whole world of possibilities and stem cells soon became the foundation of regenerative medicine because it was possible to make adult derived stem cells and generate all the different cells and tissues of the bodies. Now, mind you, not all cells are easy to produce because they have a very complex biology, but it's been incredible to watch the progress that's happened in this industry over the past two decades. What's really excited about this decade is that the leading regenerative medicine pioneers are poised to cure many diseases with stem cell derived therapies in Parkinson's disease, vision loss, spinal cord injury, heart disease, diabetes, you name it. These diseases affect millions of patients in the US, internationally, and will continue to affect us as a human race. So it really does come down to survival. As the global population grows beyond where we are today at 7.8 billion, we need to tackle these issues and think of scalable solutions to curing these diseases. The promised land of where we want to get to is a world where it's possible to produce personalized stem cells for patients on demand. Why do I care about personalized stem cells? They are the safest for patients. So being able to make stem cells that match my DNA versus your DNA are going to be the safest for each of one of us respectively instead of taking something off the shelf. But today, it can cost on the order of a million dollars to make a dose of personalized stem cells. The reason being, it's a highly manual process. Here is one of our star scientists demonstrating how this is done. It starts with the scientist looking at stem cells under a plate, evaluating which cells are high and low quality by eye, and then using a pipette tip or a needle to remove and scrape away any unwanted cells on the plate. Our scientist has trained over a decade to develop these skill sets. These skills are not easily transferable. There's a lot of human to human variability in the process as a result. So Lino comes in and we say, okay, we're going to digitize this entire process. And in order to do that, we merge together three different disciplines, stem cell biology, laser physics, and software and machine learning. That's the only way to build a truly groundbreaking solution to the problem. And we're very grateful to be backed by forward future thinking investors who believe and share this mission with us. So how does the technology work? We start by imaging cells. We rely on imaging data to inform us which cells are high versus low quality. And then we train machine learning algorithms to decipher the best cells in the plate and figure out which cells are not that high quality. Once we know which cells are good or bad, we use a single cell laser processing system to eliminate cells on the plate and this is the most precise way you could possibly eliminate cells from a culture. 
the reason this is important is it increases the yield of the process by potentially orders of magnitude and thus reducing the cost and making this approach accessible across a wide range of applications. Not only can we delete cells, we can even train algorithms to classify which stem cell colonies are high versus low quality. Machine learning has sub come so far in the past decade that it is a truly exciting time to be a part of that industry and reap the rewards, essentially. We're also able to remove cells in larger area. Here you can see the platform can do single cell removal in very distinct patterns, web-like patterns in this case, that are an interesting application for certain stem cell-based protocols. Our focus at Selena really is to think of single cell level data, but also think about how do we collect data at every step of the process of manufacturing. In general, it takes several months to, to start with patient blood cells, turning those blood cells into stem cells, and then producing various therapeutic cells and tissues for the body. And we are prioritizing capturing data at almost every day of the process so that we know at a single cell level the quality of the cells that are emerging at the end of the process. We take this very seriously. So our approach at Selino is very software driven and it's very data driven because data is going to, the data that we collect is going to make sure that the cells coming out of the platform are not just the highest quality, they're also the safest for patients. And that's ultimately the goal for the entire industry is to produce really safe cells for patients. Over the next year, we're really focused on generating high quality personalized stem cells that the official word for that are autologous stem cells. This is important because um, this is perhaps the major bottleneck in scaling up personalized stem cell therapies. So that's the bottleneck we're committed to resolving over the next year. Beyond that, what happens after? There are incredible opportunities to gene edit stem cells and those derived cells and tissues thanks to discoveries such as CRISPR-Cas9 that won the Nobel Prize last year, rightfully so, we have this opportunity not just to make patient-specific stem cells, but also to gene edit them to remove any genetic defects that might be leading to disease. There are many life-saving therapies that can be produced this way. And beyond gene editing, there are also new tools emerging now that allow you to activate genes. So you have a stem cell with all of its code intact, and then you can use CRISPR activators, transcription factors to turn genes on and off in a specific order where you can program the stem cell to become any end cell that you want and do it in a fast and efficient way, cutting down manufacturing timelines. I'm very excited about merging all of those platforms together to produce cells that are maybe not even limiting ourselves to what's humanly possible in the human body, but producing super cells. The other aspect that we're exploring is the different modalities of cells and tissues that need to be generated for various applications. Let's say for a certain application, you only need a single layer of cells. This could be one layer of skin, but there could be another application where not you need multiple cells patterned together in a set pattern for the therapeutic effect to happen in the patient. So these are patterned single cell layers. And then beyond that, there's also a need to be able to stack cells on top of each other to get to smaller mini organs and of course expanding the scope to make entire organs with single cell precision. This is what I'm excited about for the next decade. I know all of these things will happen because we have all the right tools available to us today. Let me walk through, through an example of how all of these things can come together. The example I want to talk about is making a patient-specific retina. When you have retinal degeneration, the cells in your retina perhaps died or they were damaged due to an injury and those cells don't come back. You have to do a cell therapy transplant to bring sight back. And sight is 
one of the main reasons we humans we we feel human we feel independent we can live our lives so it's a very important area of work but a challenging one what we're doing at Selino is right now focusing on starting with patient blood cells and generating really high quality stem cells from them in a scalable manner, bringing down the cost by at least one or two orders of magnitude. What happens next? You have your stem cell with the code intact. Then you can run the code to produce different layers of the retina. The retina has 10 layers, but here I'm showing the three I would say important layers from a transplantation perspective, the retinal pigment epithelial layer at the bottom, the photoreceptors, the rods and cones in the middle, and then the retinal ganglion cells which connect to the brain. It is possible to biologically produce these layers today. And then the ultimate win would be if we were able to stack the different layers together to produce a full stack retina for somebody that has a retinal tear or entirely damaged retina. This may look very complicated, but all of these different pieces are being worked on today. Selino is working on the first part of this. Our collaborators are working on producing all the different layers of the retina. And yes, over the next five to 10 years, I, I am optimistic that we will start to see stacked retinal tissues emerging. I presented the retinal case, but there are so many cells and tissues in the body that need to be replaced for disease. And that's why our mission at Selino is every human, every cell. How do we personalize these cell and tissue therapies for people and patients who need them? That's what we're on a mission to resolve. When I think of cells and tissues, it's quite incredible to think about the intricacies of the human body and in a lot of ways it reminds me of tapestries. Tapestries such as this one with beautiful patterns and colors. Tapestries and were made manually for the longest time by hand. They still are today in many parts of the world. However in the 1800s there was this incredible step forward where punch cards were used to predetermine the patterns that were being weaved into tapestry making and carpets. This is the earliest form of computers actually, it's such a card loom. And fast forward, look at us today. It is really possible to automate tapestry making and take it to a whole nother level. This is what I imagine for the future of cell and tissue generation. This is the future that Selena is committed to building. To tie it back to the topic of conversation today, if we want to be successful in expanding and maintaining human presence on Earth, or whether we want to colonize near and distant planets, very important to have a specific lens on regenerative medicine and that's where automation, miniaturization, bringing processes into a box are really going to create and lead to important paradigm shifts for the entire industry. I'm really excited about the rest of the con rest of the day and conference and event to hear what everybody has to say uh, but I'm confident that if we merge different disciplines together and we commit to solving the biggest problems that we face as humanity, we will be successful. Thank you so much.